Good day. It is very important to consider vulnerable groups when we exercise the right to public information. Let me provide you with a few pointers when we look at vulnerable groups and exercising one's right to information. First of all, I would like to highlight the importance that access to information is a fundamental right as set forward in Article 19 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The right to information is essential so that we can fight mismanagement and corruption and is also a prerequisite to achieve sustainable development. In fact, UNESCO is the custodian agency of one of the sustainable development goals, the goal 16.10.2, that looks specifically at the number of countries that adopt and implement constitutional, statutory and or policy guarantees for public access to information. In our last survey in 2022, 136 countries had access to information laws and it shows very clearly how important it is to have not only a law in place, but also an um, oversight body that could guarantee that one's right to access to information is implemented. That is also why UNESCO supports capacity development initiatives so that governments and civil societies can not only collect data on the implementation of their laws, but can also improve their laws by learning from others and uh, some of the great initiatives that some of the countries are exercising. But when we talk about this rights and specifically within the framework of sustainable development, we cannot leave anyone behind. And that is why we need to look specifically at the inclusion of vulnerable groups. The Universal Periodic Review is a specific mechanism that one could use to look at how do countries actually implement this human right that is access to information? In fact, UNESCO produced a specific guidelines for information commissioners so that they could see what their role is in order to make sure that not only the right to access to information is implemented, but that it also takes into account the specific needs of women, elderly, ethnic minorities, people with disabilities, rural populations, and others. I would like to highlight three different guarantees to the right to access to information and the inclusion of vulnerable groups. One related to access to inf information for women, another one on access to information for persons with disabilities, and lastly, uh, the importance of access to information in a multilingual context. When we look firstly at the guaranteeing the right for information for women, we can see that while there are many of these laws that I just mentioned that exist, this right is still elusive for many women. And this is because of different reasons um, in different countries. But uh, in order for women to exercise their right, there should be very specific actions that are taken at the international level to acknowledge the importance of this important right, but also at the national level to make sure that when access to information rights are implemented, they take into account the specific needs of women in, in exercising their right. When we talk about the importance of guaranteeing the right of access to information for peoples with disabilities, it's important to mention that the UN Convention on the Right of Persons with Disabilities specifically stipulates in Article 21 that it is important to ensure that people with disabilities can exercise their right to freedom of expression, um, and it includes also the freedom to seek, receive, and impart information and ideas. And this is about access to information. UNESCO has done a study uh, where we, ex where we uh, analyzed 132 countries' laws on access to information, and we saw that only 37 of these laws explicitly refers to the importance 
of access to information laws for people with disabilities. And when they mention it, it is very lightly mentioned and does not make it explicitly um, uh, important so that uh, people with disabilities can access public information in an accessible format. So much can be done in order to implement access to information laws and to make sure that public information is available in accessible formats. Lastly, let me also say a few words on the importance of guaranteeing the right to access to information in a multilingual environment. According to the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, the right to free expression and to access to information is in one's own language is one of the fundamental conditions for the full empowerment of Indigenous peoples. The Global Action Plan of the International Decade of Indigenous Languages that stretches from uh, 2022 to 2032 acknowledge also explicitly the right to information under one of its outputs that calls on favorable conditions to be established for digital empowerment and access to information. And we have several good practices where some countries actually provide this right to information also in indigenous languages. One such example is in Mexico, where indigenous languages are on an equal basis as Spanish for any matter or procedure of a public nature, as well as access to public information. In federal districts and other federal entities where indigenous communities live, the corresponding governments are required to service them in the language of choice. The UNESCO policy guidelines, another reference on promoting the right to access to information in national frameworks, also highlight this importance, especially when we look at how new technologies actually facilitate the implementation of access to information. In conclusion, we have seen that the right to access to information is important for transparency, accountabilities, and for citizens to actually exercise their right and be fully part of any governmental policy um, discussions and involvement. But not everyone is on equal foot when it comes to this right. And that often some people are left out, but there are also good uh, practices where it is possible to include women and their specific needs to access to information, people living with disabilities, and making that information in a, available in accessible format, and multilingual information available to the public. So let's try to see how we could duplicate these good examples of different countries around the world. Much need to be done so that we can exercise this fundamental right of ours as information becomes more and more important so that we could be truly citizens of the world.